Uh, difficult questions. <laughs> Uh, about the cast method leader, I see. I, I, I don't think it's uh, any kind of a necessary condition for socialism to 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 develop and survive. I happen to wrote a book uh, titled uh, "Failure of Krasma," uh, <laughs> yeah. talking about uh, uh, Mao uh, and uh, his relationship with the grassroots uh, during the Cultural Revolution. Uh, even though people at, uh, emotionally attached to Mao as a charismatic leader, but uh, people have to interpret it message from Mao, and when, when they're interpreting the, the, the message from Mao, they become quite rational. I mean, uh, uh, bas basically, they interpret it very differently. Therefore, during the Cultural Revolution, you see different factions fighting against each other, both use the same language from Mao. So I, I, I don't think that's a necessary condition. Uh, about the collective ownership, I, I, I think we have to make a distinction between Zhai Ji Di and the Zhe Ren Tian. The uh, uh, in many cases uh, somehow related with the Zai Ji Di rather than Zhe Ren Tian. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you uh, translate those two? Uh, Zai Ji Di. <laughs> I have no yeah. idea how to translate. <laughs> Zai Ji Di means that each each household allocates uh, a, a piece of land for building house. Okay. Uh, right. And Zhe Ren Tian. Residence. Child uh, residence. Residence okay. land. And, uh, Building. Farming land. Yeah, farming. Uh, farming. Uh, is different. So uh, mostly related with Zai Ji Di, not so much of the Zhe Ren Tian. Yeah. Also, communal land, um, we are not talking about just a piece of land uh, communal. We are talking about the entire land uh, communal. <laughs> so that's uh, quite different from traditional communal land. We have to make that kind of, uh, uh, distinction as well. Uh, about uh, nationalism, um, I, don't, I, I think perhaps it's uh, necessary uh, for the uh, socialist socialism to succeed in one country, uh, there are some elements of uh, nationalism. But it's, it's not going to be sufficient. For instance, uh, Jiang Jieshi Nationalist Party, by name is a nationalist party. They are more nationalist than the Communist Party, but they still failed. Uh, therefore, this is a competition of two different types of nationalism. One version is a socialist, or another is a different type. Of, so it may not be uh, uh, the, the most uh, defining uh, characteristic of uh, uh, socialism, I would say that. About a religion, I, I have no, no. Uh, I, I just come across with a, a quite interesting survey data. Uh, even though many people talk about revival of a religion uh, in China, but if you ask people what religion uh, you, you believe in, uh, you will find out the proportion of people who believe in certain type of religion is quite, quite small. Only when you ask people whether you worship your ancestor, then you see about 30, 40 percent of people. Uh, those people are quite uh, uh, pragmatic. They can worship the uh, Christian God, uh, go to the, uh, uh, the Buddhist temple or Taoist temple, they worship all kinds of God, uh, so for practical purposes. Not quite religious in the, in the, in the strict sense, I think. In the Abrahamic no, sense. <laughs> <laughs> but in the anthropological sense, definitely religion, yeah. right? It's what people are doing. OK, yes, uh, quite a lot of uh, different questions. Let me just talk about the connection between nationalism and socialism. I don't think that socialism would have arisen in Vietnam had it not been for the quest for you know, independence and a attempt to respond to the challenge that social Darwinism seemed to pose. It was a civilizational one. That is, in Asia, social Darwinism was seen as a national issue rather than competition among individuals. It was competition among nations. And uh, as Yang Qichao wrote in a preface to a book by Fang Bo Chiao, whom he met in, uh, in Japan, um, you know, look at Vietnam, you know, it's a model, it's, a, it's what's going to happen to Yunnan, you know, um, uh, if we don't, you know, uh, look out. And uh, he was really talking about, you know, the uh, social Darwinist, you know, competition. Um, in terms, so, <clears throat> so what Ho Chi Minh found in Lenin's thesis was precisely the way to you know, uh, respond to the social Darwinist challenge and to um, gain independence from colonial rule. And he saw that it needed a total transformation of 
Vietnamese culture, Vietnamese society, Vietnamese politics in order to achieve that. Um, some you know, other people uh, might say, well, we need to achieve independence before we can transform you know, society, but for communists, the two went together. In terms of charisma, uh, well, Ho Chi Minh may not have been the most powerful of the leaders, but he certainly was put forward as the figure, the symbol of Vietnamese communism. Um, and uh, you know, there are expressions in Vietnam such as the Ho Chi Minh Revolution, the Ho Chi Minh Pioneers. I'm going to be uh, chairing a panel at the AS and living in the shadow of Ho Chi Minh and so on and so forth. So, uh, so he was the certainly Cambodian. seen as charismatic and you know, a way to mobilize the population. And indeed, lacking the uh, charismatic figures nowadays, uh, Ho Chi Minh's uh, name continue uh, continues to be invoked. Um, regarding religion, as in other realms, Vietnam was less radical than in China. Vietnamese continue to be uh, exercising religion. Um, we may call it superstition, we may call it religion, uh, and you know, Chinese and Vietnamese popular religion, popular culture bear many similarities. Now, um, I should say that the socialist state, both in China and Vietnam, have a lot in common with the Confucian state when it comes to religion. There is san you know, sanctioned religion, and there is superstition, heterodoxy, mixing, you know, xie tiao, and so on. In the case of Viet in Vietnam today, what has always been a threat, and it goes back to the Tang, uh, dynasty uh, rulers, no, uh, repression of Buddhism, what is the threat is organized religions which refuse to see the state as having supremacy, as being the you know, ultimate arbiter of what is orthodox. Uh, and you know, Tang uh, di uh, dynasty monks refuse to kowtow in front of the rulers because they supposedly had left society behind. So, to de uh, so that was the case of Catholics in Vietnam because they were seen as venerating, you know, a god that was not, not even Vietnamese, you know, and <coughs> and, um, and uh, the Unified Buddhist Church similarly refuses to see the state as, you know, uh, as being the supreme arbiter of what is correct as you know, what is sanctioned. When it comes to popular religion, if you can pass it off as popular culture, you're in clover. You know, it's the revival of tradition, and that is the case too in China, especially with you know as Gao Bingdong was uh, you know uh, talking not long ago. Uh, if it has the imprimatur of UNESCO and you know uh, intangible heritage, cultural heritage, the same kind of dynamics you know uh, go. So in fact. Superstition in the old sense is flourishing, whereas organized religion, whether Buddhist or Catholic or Protestant uh, evangelical, uh, is, uh, has a much more iffy relationship with the state. 